Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I'm going to finish off the inexpensive digital signage series with a few extra tips and tricks. I wanted to finish off this series with a few extra tips to make your newscast experience better. But firstly, some credit. This whole thing was based on the work of Gus from Pi My Life Up that I found while researching the topic originally. I've built and expanded on the idea from there. Secondly, the background. The default background on the Pi is pretty and all going well will only be visible for about 20 seconds or so. But I prefer to replace the background with something that brands the whole thing and lets people know what's coming. To break into a running newscast, all you have to do is press Alt F4 and that will quit the Chromium browser. Then you need to download the image you want to your Pi, either through the web or through a USB device. I recommend adding it to the pictures folder. To set it up, right click somewhere on the desktop and select desktop preferences. Choose your picture from the folder and choose the layout that works best for you. I also like to remove the wastebasket and mounted disks from being displayed on the desktop, just to keep it clean. Then click OK. Now it's ready to go at next boot. Thirdly, if you're running run of the Raspberry Pi Zeros, you might be able to take advantage of the low power requirements and power the Pi directly from the USB port on the TV. It will depend on how much power the TV is outputting, but it's certainly worth a try. Fourthly, speaking of power, adding a small battery backup might be a good idea if you're in an area that has poor power. Something like these little things that we discussed in the episode up here could be perfect. Because the Pi checks at boot time to see if HDMI is active, and many new HDMI TVs take quite a while to boot, often if there is a power outage, the Pi boots up well before the TV is ready. A little battery pack like one of these is perfect to keep the Pi running. So all you'll have to do is turn the TV back on and everything will be running again. Even better, if you can find a way to have the TV turn on automatically when the power comes back on, that would be even better. Fifthly, a little setup and troubleshooting tip. Especially when using the Pi Zero, having only one USB port can be a bit of a pain. You can use a hub, but that's a bit complicated. For troubleshooting, I keep this in my bag of tricks. It's a little keyboard and trackpad combo that uses a tiny little USB dongle that I can plug in to the Pi Zero's OTG cable like this. It gives me full functionality with just one USB port. You can find a link to buy one up here. Lastly, proxy servers. If your network has a proxy server, you will know that some projects and software out on the internet seem great, but they simply don't work behind a proxy. I know, I feel your pain. So if you head up to the project page, there's now some additional lines so that you can add a proxy to the environment variables and get your Raspberry Pi newscast working happily behind a proxy server, even an authenticated one. Question of the day, do you think you're ready to set up a Raspberry Pi newscast? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're using this in your club or business, I'd love you to consider some financial support for this channel. You can head over to techdoctor.com.au forward slash donate and make a one-off or ongoing contribution. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before here and here, and you can click the logo down here to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to be notified of any new episodes as they come out. You can also click the envelope up the top to subscribe to our mailing list. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.